Good morning and thank you and welcome to the first major event of High Level Week 2018. We're very excited to see all of you this morning. The President takes a personal interest in the fight against drugs. The U.S., like many of your countries, has seen too many lives lost and families destroyed due to the illegal movement and abuse of drugs. So we thank you very much for signing the compact and for being here. What brings us together today is something that has touched every American. Everyone knows someone who has suffered or died from abusing illegal drugs. And drugs are not only an American problem, the drug problem is global. It is a demand side issue and a supply side issue. Drugs are a corruption issue, a law and order issue, a civil society issue. All of these issues are part of the drug problem and they don't stop at geographical borders. It will take every country at the United Nations to address the drug problem. The United States is confronting a serious opioid crisis that is fueled by the rapid increase in the illicit supply of synthetic drugs like fentanyl. We're not alone. Countries around the world are seeing similar trends of increased addiction and significant loss of life due to deadly drugs like those. We expect this upward trend to continue. So we're here today to talk about solutions. We've seen firsthand how complex the global drug supply chain is. We've seen what's working and what isn't to stop production, trafficking, and use. We've been to coca fields and sat down with leaders in Colombia, Guatemala, and Honduras. These countries are committed to doing good work to combat this crisis, work that benefits all of us. Our partnerships are making a difference. The President wants to give, get even more countries involved to pursue action on a global scale. The President will say more about this in a minute, but the global call of action began as a way to build awareness among world leaders about the drug problem. The next step is to reaffirm the commitment of UN member states to key UN conventions and institutions devoted to this issue. And we need to pay more attention to emerging challenges, specifically those posed by synthetic drugs. Finally, we want every UN member state to commit to action. The global call to action asks every country to pledge to develop action plans for addressing drug supply and demand, treatment options, and international cooperation. The response we've received so far has been nothing short of outstanding. Mr. President, we're proud to join our 31 co-hosts, including Colombia, the United Kingdom, Afghanistan, Kenya, and Jordan, who helped gather the countries assembled here today. And we are honored to be among 130 member states who are here and have signed on to the global call to action. Your commitment is an inspiration. We hope it leads more nations to join us. But none of us would be here today without the leadership of the man it is now my honor to introduce. As President of the United States, Donald Trump has taken on the challenge and felt the weight of leading a nation in pain and grief over the abuse of illegal drugs. Now he has taken this leadership worldwide. He is relentlessly committed to building a global coalition to fight the global problem of drug abuse. We are grateful for his leadership in this event. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce my boss, President Donald J. Trump. Thank you very much, Nikki. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here this morning. It is a great honor to address you on an issue that affects every nation across the globe, the world drug problem, and a big problem it is. The scourge of drug addiction continues to claim too many lives in the United States and in nations around the world. Today, we commit to fighting the drug epidemic together. I want to express my deep gratitude to Ambassador Haley for her outstanding leadership in counter-narcotics at the United Nations, along with the dedicated work of our great Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, 
who's done an absolutely fantastic job, and Ambassador John Bolton. Thank you very much. We also thank the Secretary General for joining us at our special guest. And as our special guest, uh, he's become a great friend, and he's doing a, a wonderful job at a very, very complex situation, but a beautiful situation. And I've always said the United Nations has tremendous potential, and that potential is being met, slowly but surely, it's being met. We are likewise grateful to our 31 co-host countries. Each of you is taking critical steps to combat the, the global drug problem. As the 2018 World Drug Report highlights, cocaine and opium production have hit record highs, incredibly, and global deaths caused by drug use has increased by 60 percent from the year 2000 to 2015. So in 15 years, it's gone up 60 percent, which is absolutely terrible. As we know, illicit drugs are linked to organized crime, illegal financial flows, corruption, and terrorism. It's vital for public health and national security that we fight drug addiction and stop all forms of trafficking and smuggling that provide the financial lifeblood for vicious transnational cartels. In the United States, we're taking aggressive action, securing our borders, supporting law enforcement, devoting record funding to the opioid crisis, and promoting treatment and recovery. Many nations here today are also taking bold action. Newly elected President Duque, Colombia, campaigned on an anti-drug platform and won a very, very impressive victory. Congratulations. We look forward to partnering with his new administration to eradicate cocoa production in his country. All of us must work together to dismantle drug production and defeat drug addiction. For this reason, last month, the United States announced a global call to action on the world drug problem. The call is simple. Reduce drug demand, cut off the supply of illicit drugs, expand treatment, and strengthen international cooperation. If we take these steps together, we can save the lives of countless people in all corners of the world. And when I say countless, I'm talking about millions and millions of people. I'm thrilled that every country in the room today has agreed to answer our call. And I want to thank each and every one of you for your commitment to this important initiative. The United States looks forward to working with you to strengthen our communities, protect our families, and deliver a drug-free future for all of our children. Thank you very much, and thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. We are very grateful that the Secretary General is with us today to kick off High Level Week and to show his commitment to the world campaign against the abuse and movement of Ill illicit drugs. We are also grateful for the UN organizations that are hard at work on this issue, particularly the Commission on Narcotic Drugs and the UN Office on Drugs and Crime. Their leadership on international drug policy is invaluable. The United States believes that the international community should approach the fight against illegal drugs as an important component, component of promoting international peace and security. Our next speaker was with us last year on leading the reform effort of the UN. We deeply appreciate his leadership and his presence here today. Ladies and, general, ladies and gentlemen, Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Mr. President, let me begin by thanking you. You are focusing a global spotlight on the world drug problem, and we have never needed it more. As you have so eloquently said about the drug challenge, and I quote, failure is not an option, and addiction is not our future. That sets out today's discussion perfectly. And for me, like so many of you, this is more than just a policy issue. It is personal. Someone very close to me passed away at an unbearably young age. My sister is a psychiatrist, and she spent many years working at a drug treatment center in Lisbon. 
I saw the heavy toll it took on her day after day as she treated those suffering so badly. I must tell you, I have an enormous admiration for my sister. I think I have done several tough jobs in my life, nothing compared, which I've seen her doing. And the reality is that drugs and addiction are not abstract issues. All of us have stories. All of us should know that this can knock on our door at any moment. It's our duty to act and act now. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the situation is alarming. Global production of opium and manufacture of cocaine, as the president just said, has never been higher. In recent years, some 31 million people around the world require treatment because of their drug use. And some 450,000 people die every year from overdoses or drug-related health issues. Non-medical use of tramadol in parts of Africa and the Middle East is threatening communities that are already fragile. And here in the United States, the opioid crisis is utterly heartbreaking, destroying lives and impacting communities. Despite the urgency of the problem, for every six people around the world, we need treatment for drug use, just one receives it. And that figure is even lower for women drug users. To tackle this complex issue, we need strong action in two areas. First, by cracking down on tra trafficking and those who profit from human misery. That means denying safe haven to drug traffickers and better cross-border cooperation to pursue kingpins and dismantle networks. It moves improved intelligence sharing and analysis across the entire drug supply chain. And it means targeting the links between drugs, corruption, arms, human trafficking, and terrorist networks. The second action area is making sure that those who need treatment get it. Consumers are first and foremost patients and victims. These two principles guided the drug policy launched by my government when I was Prime Minister of Portugal two decades ago. In the 90s, my country was reeling. We had some of Europe's highest death rates for drug abuse and the highest rate of HIV amongst the injection drug users. First, we took on on drug traffickers. I made sure law enforcement officers got the information and the equipment they needed. For example, they told me that boats could not keep up with the drug smugglers, so we immediately invested in a new generation of armed speed boats. As you can imagine, Portugal in the extreme west of Europe, drugs come essentially by sea. And uh, I was so excited about this project that I myself, as Prime Minister, participate in the test runs of those speedboats at sea. At the same time, the government assumed its responsibilities for prevention and treatment, rooted in the conviction that drug addicts are victims who need treatment rather than punishment. And the policy worked. There was an increase in the quantity of drugs seized and in the efficiency of police and customs operations. Drug consumption went down significantly, particularly among young people. The number of problematic drug users went down by 50%. And there was a re significant reduction in the infectious diseases associated with drug use and in the number of people taking overdoses. Today, Portugal has one of the Europe's lowest death rates from drug use. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. National priorities may differ, but the global community shares a common goal to protect people's security, health, and well-being. And the United Nations system, and I personally, stand ready to support governments in meeting the challenge of the world drug problem. The United Nations stands behind the implementation of the UN Drug Control Conventions and the outcome document of UN General Assembly Special Session in 2016. Mr. President, once again, thank you very much for your leadership in bringing this life and death issue front and center. Failure is indeed not an option. Together, we will succeed. We will never give up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary General, and thank you, Mr. President. We cannot be more proud of today's exceptional turnout and this amazing show of support for the Global Call of Action. The United States, together with all of you, will continue to work hard to end the suffering and the loss of life that comes from the abuse of illegal drugs. 
We hope to hear from each of you about the progress you make in the weeks and months ahead. And thank you for showing what a united United Nations can do, even at 8 a.m. on a Monday morning. Have a great and successful week. God bless you all. Thank you.